guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be doing both some planting and some weeding maintenance. We're gonna start here under this maple tree with some planting because it's shaded and it's beautiful right now. This is the spot right here. We have a bunch of open space and I have a bunch of beautiful coleus to fill it in with. And I feel like this is gonna be a really fun thing to put here because it's one of those interesting locations that gets quite a bit of shade during the day, but then right at the very end of the day, it gets a good amount of sun, not, not like hours and hours, but it gets that intense sun. The color blaze coleus can do sun or shade, so I think it's gonna be a really great spot for these. Plus it will add some much needed color. You know, we have this whole area is decked out with daffodils. There's like a thousand plus daffodils in this one flower bed and it looks really pretty, but I haven't really done much else. We did plant those boxwoods last year to kind of uh, finish up this hedge. Now that we kind of know what direction we're going for the entryway over there, I felt better about boxing that in. I planted several small hellebore plugs last year. A few of them did bloom. We've got a few hostas in here as well. And while I do want to develop this further to be just perennials and shrubs, I've got the coleus here. We've got the open space and I think that'll be a fun thing to, to put in here. As we move more this direction, you can see along the walkway, there are more perennials and things. Beautiful hosta. This is an Empress Wu right there. And there's some ferns, some lamb's ear that got a little bit damaged in our hailstorm the other day. Surprisingly, the hosta was fine. And our incredible hydrangeas are looking peak right now. Oh, they're so gorgeous. This area right here looks just a little bit neglected compared to everything else. So I think adding these in will really bring a lot of interest. We've got Lime Time, Golden Dreams, a new one for next year called Cherry Drop. There's Newly Noir. There's, I've got two Elbridos. <laughs> one, two, Wicked Witch and Cherry Brandy. Oh. Gorgeous. I thought we would start off with this project while it's nice and cool and in the shade and then we're going to head out and weed around our tomato plants. That's going to be in the full sun and that will be a nice dirty, dirty job. So we'll start with the fun one first. So I'm going to lay all of these out. I'm going to go grab the auger. We'll get them planted. It's going to be awesome. Got them all laid out and there are so many more coleus than I thought I had in the back of the gator. This is going to look so beautiful. It already does look beautiful, even when they're not in the ground. I did grab some double up white begonias. I decided instead of the this coleus wants to get pretty good size, I wanted to layer down here by the rock wall. So I kind of just edged it with the double up whites. And then I had a few left over that I'm gonna pop over onto this side. So four of the, the uh, cherry drop coleus, and then a few of the begonia. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so spectacular. Can you imagine when it's all filled in? Oh, let's get him in the ground. I'm still in the middle of planting, but I wanted to stop for a quick second so I could show you the difference in what the root ball looks like in the compostable pots versus the plastic pots. And I don't know if it's a variety difference. It could be that, that one is a little bit more aggressive, but the roots on this one, they're insane. Okay, so in this plastic pot here, we have the Golden Dreams, which is a super healthy looking plant. And the roots look very healthy too. Very healthy, it's well rooted, but look at this cherry drop. The roots are coming through, like these tabs are meant to be popped off and you can plant the whole 
plant down in this container in the ground. We're too dry here to do that because it does take a couple of seasons for it to fully compost. Uh, but I am just like, it's almost kind of hard to get these out because of how rooted this plant is. Yeah, look at the difference there. So this is the compostable pot and this is out of the plastic pot. I'm gonna look at the Wicked Witch Coleus to see, cause like this one has some roots coming out and it's in a plastic pot as well. But it looks about the same as the Golden Dreams. Yeah, so it'd be really interesting to have the same variety, one in each kind of container. Just, I think that would be a more fair test because one might just be more aggressive than the other. But yeah, I was fairly impressed by that root system there. Okay, let's finish this up. My goodness you guys this is the best i think this flower bed has ever looked and it's not even filled in yet behold the biggest coleus bed ever it's so pretty oh i mean that's a lot of plants i'm not gonna lie it's a lot of plants but i don't think it's too few i think they're gonna fill in beautifully you know there's enough space around these plants for them to bulk up a bit a little more space around some than others because you know i just kind of plunked and and planted and they're close enough to where they'll all fill in and look full now i did color block so i did you know specific varieties in specific areas i think a couple of things one aaron prefers color blocks he really likes that look so i think he's really going to like this flower bed um, also i think if i was going to intermix all of these or if i did intermix all of them it would look messy in the end it would just look like where do you rest your eye there's just too much going on as opposed to when there's you know a, a bigger drift of something it's just a little bit more calming and a little bit more pleasing especially when you're dealing with this many different varieties so starting kind of on this end i just did the double up white begonias along the edge i didn't put any in there because they stay too short i think they top out at like 10 inches maybe so they created a beautiful border right there and a little cute little drift there and then the cherry drop coleus which there's a drift right here and then they kind of pick back up and there's a little group of them right here around the bird bath i had only five of the wicked witch so it worked out perfectly this is about the amount of space that i needed for them the lime times go right through the middle i love that one i could have filled this whole bed with that and hostas and these double up white begonias I think that would be a beautiful, peaceful look. But they just kind of amp up the brightness. You know, the hostas that are back in there are pretty bright, but they just add a lot more bulk. I tucked the two Elbritos right in the center just for a little shot of kind of pinkish red. And then we've got the Golden Dreams right in this area. And I think having kind of that vein of a little bit more chartreuse breaks up the cherry drop with the cherry brandy over there. Too much of that together would have looked too dark. I had the most of the cherry brandy, so that goes right around this area. And then the Newly Noir. Oh, I really like it right there. I especially like it up next to this tricolor beach, that dark burgundy with the pink leaves. Oh, it's so pretty. Pom-poms, oh my goodness, those are really cute and colorful. Baby, these are babies. Baby pom-poms? Baby pom-poms, put them on the golf cart. You put them on the golf cart. Have you got your unicorn backpack? Right here. Yeah, oh, I love it. Do you have goodies in there? Um, I'm going to get it. Okay, oh, you're so cute. <laughs> And then to finish off this corner, I have the four cherry drops and they look really pretty with the lamb's ear, lamium and the Hakanakloa Japanese forest grass. It's just a really pleasing blend. Here's kind of a view from this side, kind of our before shot here. And even in just one month, can you imagine how much more full this is gonna look? Oh, okay, I gotta show you our setup for the hose link over here too. Because this hose link is on the side of the house and we don't have hose access right in front of our kitchen. Uh, and it's really tough if you don't have enough room to pull your hose out, um, it's hard to go around a corner. So Aaron 
fixed me up with this. So this is from Ely, the Ely hose reels. It's two parts. There's this upper part here that I always hook to the hose link when I'm done because I don't want people to trip on it. But there's this part here that pounds into the ground. So it's flush, it's not gonna trip anybody. When I need to use the hose link, I just pop this in. We grab our hose link. Okay, I only have it extended this far. So when we get it to this location, we can hook the hose right there and it continues to extend. So that enables me to use it here. Otherwise I'd have to pull it out into the driveway and then bring the hose back in. Uh, so he's been wanting to put a hose link in the vegetable garden, but I kind of have the same issue where um, I don't really want to put a hose link right in the center to where I can pull it all the way down the center of the aisle. It needs to be off to the side. So if we put a hose link in there, we could put a hook on the ground somewhere near the center and I could do the same exact thing and then no coiling. So when I'm done, I come over here, take my hose out of the hook, let it do its thing and retract. And then I come over, pick this up and store it right there. Game changer right there, love it. Aaron's always good at thinking about how to make things more practical and easier on your body. Yeah, makes the whole project more pleasant. All right guys, so that was project number one for the day, didn't even break a sweat. It's so nice out here, I love it. And I intended on doing this one first just for that reason because I know that later on today it'll be in more sun. Uh, so now we're gonna head out to the area where we planted all of our tomatoes and we have a big weeding job to do out there. All right guys, <laughs> here we are. Here's our little alleyway of tomatoes and they're looking great. They're blooming, some have already set some fruit. We've got sunflowers on this side, hibiscus, there's corn, all of our vine crops down toward the end. This is the main thing that I'm concerned about right here, just as long as the tomatoes go. So, you know, this whole area was pasture, just like this here. And Aaron came through with the tiller. Well, first off, we had the whole thing leveled last year. And then Aaron came through this, this uh, spring and tilled me up two really long rows. And I didn't really want to fuss with weeds that much. And I'm still not going to, except for when they start encroaching on my plants here. Um, so today I'm hoping to weed this aisle and just a little bit away from this side to the end of the tomatoes. Let's walk down that way. I have done no pruning and I don't really intend on doing a whole lot out here in the way pruning. Yeah, look at that. We've got some romas starting to form up. Right here, we've got a beautiful cluster. There's a whole bunch on this one. Look at that. Oh yeah, there's a bunch on this one too. And this one might be starting to turn a little bit red. Anyway, right at the end of the tomatoes, I'm just gonna kind of stop right here on either side. We've got our vine crops going and you guys know how vine crops are. I mean, they'll just get big and sprawling and they'll probably help suppress these weeds a little bit and I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Unless some of them get just massive, we might come in and take them out. But for now, I think that will be just fine. This, however, <laughs> is not ideal. I don't know why on this side they're bigger than on that side, but either way, corn is looking great. I need to come along and thin it. There are a few weeds in there as well. Here are the sweet potatoes, the ones that looked like nothing. I thought they were gonna all die, and I think most of them took. I had a few leftover artichokes. We've got the hibiscus. Isn't it crazy that stuff grows in this white soil? Sunflowers looking awesome. Bethany actually has just done a wonderful job keeping up on some of the weeds. You can tell right here. I know Paul came out at one point and did a weeding and then Bethany has been keeping up on all of this. Then we've got a bunch of sunflowers looking beautiful. Our peppers over here are doing great and they are loading up. In fact, I need to come out and harvest some of these. I've harvested quite a few jalapenos already, which are a type of jalapeno. That. These are the fire away hot and heavies. Crazy. Our potatoes are looking amazing. There's onions and marigolds and sweet potatoes and such down that way. I am really happy with how things are growing out here for as little attention as they do get. Most of these things don't need a tremendous amount of attention anyway. Um, so it works out perfect, but yeah, let's get after these weeds. I did bring my gloves out. 
because there are stickers out here. A kneeling pad, and then I brought a couple of tools. There's a hula hoe, and then there's a hand tool, like a little hand trowel. I'm gonna start by just going at it by hand because most of these I think are pretty big. I don't think it'll take too long. I should probably time myself. Here we go. Got it all done and it looks so much better. You can actually walk down the aisle now. Oh my goodness. I feel like I am breathing a sigh of relief just seeing the airflow that has been opened up around these plants. Now on this side, I didn't take after them as much because I'm thinking, I went along and I weeded all the big stuff that was right up against the plant. So you can see like there's a foot, 18 inches or so of air between the weeds and the tomatoes. But I'm wondering if we can bring one of our tractor implements the brush hog out here and just mow this stuff down. I don't know how close we can get. Or maybe the lawn tractor, I'm not sure. But that sure would be a lot easier than hand pulling, for sure. So the way it worked out best for me was to go through and hand weed whatever I could, most of which came up easy. There are a few stumps left on some of the bigger ones. And then I went through with the hula hoe afterward and just kind of cleaned it up. I scraped up any extra weeds that were still there or any stalks of weeds that, you know, just were harder to pull out. Yeah, there were some stumps that were just big and rooted in. And if I had a shovel, I could get that out. But given the fact that this isn't really a permanent garden, gardening space, I don't really want to spend, you know, a tremendous amount of effort on it. While I was at it, I did thin the two rows of corn closest to me and the sunflowers down there that were closest to me. I haven't done that yet. You should thin corn and sunflowers and anything you're growing way before it gets to this growth stage. But I think they look good, and I'll run through these two real quick, probably this evening when the kids and I are out here messing around. And then at the end here, I left enough space, you know, just to walk kind of through here. And then again, we'll just keep our eyes on this. If it works out to mow this side with the lawn tractor, I don't know, maybe we can come through and do this row two. But in the end, I don't know that it's going to matter much. Every year, it seems like we're doing a new type of project or gardening in a new way. And I just kind of have to learn through it, you know, and kind of figure out the best ways to do things. And oftentimes it takes two, three years and, and Aaron's involvement <laughs> to get things to be the most efficient uh, for everyone. But I'm really enjoying this. This whole project has been so, so much fun. And, uh, you know, I wasn't planning on growing all of this stuff, but we've already been giving things away. I mean, I only grew eight cabbage plants but my sister-in-law is going to take some to make some sauerkraut. We've used some. I've preserved, I preserved all of our broccoli. I blanched it and froze it. I've done a bunch of snow peas and I did a bunch of carrots. Um, so I'm trying to be better about harvesting. Like when we're out in the evenings, the kids and I will harvest stuff and I'll just do like one sheet pan of veggies at a time, you know, freezing them and getting them put in bags. Um, but if you work at it just a little like small consistent efforts, I feel like I'm staying on top of it a little bit more. And I know that that will change when the real harvest season begins, you know, when all these tomatoes start bearing fruit and the corn is coming on and it all kind of happens at the same time. Uh, but it's nice to get a little bit of a head start now and get some of those early
earlier crops put up so we can use them later on. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching the video today. It was just a really nice, pleasant day. I think the high today is 81. Um, so it's very, very pleasant out here and it's not so humid today. So I'm not sweating. I don't know how you guys do it. Those of you who live in really high humid, high humidity climates, it's like you walk out your door and you're already sweaty and I can work outside all day long in a 100 degree summer day and I'm barely, well, I'm sweating, but not like I am uh, when it's humid. Even like 50% humidity is high for me. I'm not used to that. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.